Uh, I was born into a nominal Christian family where we have been encouraged to go to church as a routine. And I also followed that, participated in all the ceremonies, whatever that is required. And uh, that also in any way didn't make me a Christian indeed, because my lifestyle does not reflect what I've been taught about Jesus Christ. By reason of my religious upbringing, I was a little bit very, very religious in the sense that uh, I didn't believe in the issue of having any relationship with Jesus, like being born again, getting tongues, all those things, because I thought it was like uh, a trash. I was growing yeah. up as a young man, my vision in life centered on two key things. One, how to be an attorney, and then how to be a millionaire. You know, at so many years ago when I was born, many of it was hard to see somebody being a billionaire. So I was, I thought that the highest anybody can be is a millionaire. Perhaps if I knew that people can be a billionaire, I've been desiring to be a billionaire. Oh, again, that's 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 that one. But see, again, so sometimes they're out, and then sometimes different stories there. Sometimes... Praise God. I didn't so know that. That, that vision as a way, like, was guiding my life. And then uh, I wasn't really interested in any other thing outside these two vision of life. Growing up, like I told you, I love social activities. I grew up loving social things, but drinking, I mean, having friends, womanizing or whatever, and then all the vices, social lifestyle a young man can get involved. I was actually involved. In fact, in the university here in Nigeria, there is an association where if you register, it's a registration for you, you can drink and go on. For some of us who are Nigerian will understand about Kega and Wine Drinkers Club. I was part of it. And so many other club, Lions Club, and all those things. Oh, I was actually very, very you are social. You are then, growing up too, because I decided to be an attorney, while I was in high school, that was when I took that decision. And I was informed of those objects that would be quite relevant to the course I was pursuing. And I was informed that Bible knowledge was part of it. So Bible knowledge was part of the subject I did in secondary, in high school. I got, I got a good grade before I entered into uni, the university. And that, rather than, you know, increasing my desire to know God, that became like an obstacle. How? I felt that since I have a good grade in the, in, in the subject, I've learned a lot about the Bible. So I don't need you to preach to me. I don't need you to tell me anything about God. I, I felt that as a growing up man, I felt that I may go get anything I want. I, I will get it. So God was not a focus. God was not into consideration at all. So I kept on moving. In that process of my social life, I want to share two uh near dead misses that the Lord helped me that I didn't take note of it. In one of those occasions, we are going for a night party. I love night party a lot. So I was going for a night party with one of my cousins. And uh, late in the night, very mid late in the night, he was at the corner as he just, you know, took a turn. His, the car of the vehicle suddenly opened and the door of the car suddenly opened and I, I fell out. <laughs> Surprisingly, the back tire of the car did not crush me. Surprisingly, I was not injured. And that I came out, I stood up, I didn't consider it. I didn't see the hand of God in it. And I jumped into the car and continued the journey. And there was another incident I had too. This one happened while I've already entered into the university. I visited one of my elder brothers in, in a city called Kano here in Nigeria. I loved soccer a lot as a young man, and then we went to watch a, a match between our home team, Nigeria, and Brazil. That match, though, we lost, though, so I was coming back very angry. We ran into some of these uh, Muslim fundamentalists that are called guards, and they were threatening with all threats of life to kill us, to do this. But miraculously, on that fateful day, the Lord also delivered me and my cousin. I didn't see the hand of God in it. 
So I continued. I, I was a man who was given to social life, music, you know. I started loving music from what you call pop music, disco, country home, um, soul music, reggae, you know. I moved from there to light rock, smokies, moved to hard rock, ACDC, moved to jazz, moved to Japanese jazz. In fact, I kept on topping up my... So uh, my, my social engagement, I keep on increasing it. Now, at the time I entered the university, I've gone into another level of social life. But the Lord was kept on watching me. Uh, my desire to make it in life, to be a millionaire, was still there. So I felt I have achieved uh, the issue of becoming an attorney. I graduated from the university. But something remarkable happened before my my graduation. Rayabonki came to Nigeria to do a crusade in the early 90s, and that was around 1990 or thereabouts, or 1991. He came to a city, Wari. I thought I was persuaded to attend the crusade. Two days out of the three days crusade he did, I didn't give my life to Jesus because I felt that this is, this is not it. I didn't see any reason for it. In fact, rather, I got into argument upon argument and all that and eventually so when my auntie who invited me to that crusade saw that that didn't have any effect on me because i kept on talking about how to be rich how to have money and all that she gave me a book and that book was written by three others one and the title i didn't know the author anyway because later i got to know but the title of the book was what attracted me, and let me say deceived me. The title of the book was How to Have a Good Life. Ah, when I saw this book, I said, wow, this is what I'm looking for. This is what will make me the millionaire, you know? And I started reading the book, and it was talking about prosperity, so I was enjoying it. Let me tell you, that was the book that God used to turn me around. At the end of the day, God helped me and I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. That was how I became born again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And because I didn't have a fellowship, I didn't understand the need to join a fellowship. In 1993, the Lord helped me. I was working as a legal advisor in one of the multinational companies here in Port Harcourt as their legal advisor. And God brought me into the Full Gospel Business Fellowship International. And from there, the journey started. I came back to Full Gospel. I surrendered my life and make a public declaration. I gave my life again, and I started the journey. From 1993 to another 27 years ago, I have been in Full Gospel. And it has been a wonderful experience. But it didn't start so sweet. I thought that once you become born again, all everything, the morning will come, and everything. It didn't come. I worked in that company after a few years, the, the job stopped. Rather than the job increasing, the job stopped. And that job stopped brought me into what I may call today my wilderness experience. In that experience, I saw lack. I saw poverty. I saw un unemployment was staring me on my face. Brethren, I have certificates as a lawyer, but I did not have a job. I could not imagine it. The desire to become a millionaire, I was seeing it as a mirage. It was like, oh, this thing can no longer be realized. But I kept faith. Whatever that kept me going, my dear, I cannot tell you who I believe it must have been God, the Holy Spirit. I was, an incident came while I was in the full gospel, something very remarkable. I want to share this testimony to encourage us. I lived in Port Harcourt. I joined a chapter in Port Harcourt. I had no job. And somehow I became the secretary of the chapter. While I was looking for a job, a job came out in another city called Warri. That's about three, three hours journey. And I have been three years without a job. And then I was invited to come over to Warri to take up a job. And what it was that job, the job was to Manage a law firm of another young man who got a job with Shell Petroleum Development Limited. 
I, I was in a very big crisis because before that election took place in the full gospel chapter, I was in a dream. I saw myself being, a, you know, elected as the secretary of the chapter. I felt that it was God's desire that I should be in that chapter and work as the secretary. They look at me here without a job and there's a job offer. In fact, that journey was like the longest journey I've ever traveled because I do I accept this job? I can't be in Port Harcourt and do that job in war in another city. So one must go. And that was the dilemma I find myself. As I got to worry, I made up my mind to, to forgo that job and come back to Port Harcourt where I will remain as secretary. And when I got to worry, they asked me a question. I said, no, I don't want to accept the job. I have a job now in Port Harcourt. I said, wow. What kind of job is that? I said, I'm now the secretary of the full gospel chapter in my place. Oh my God. My people felt I'm demented. They felt that something has gone that I needed to see a psychiatrist. You know, and all that, all that, it, it opened up another door of persecution. It was like, oh, you graduated as a lawyer? You don't want to work? You don't want to earn money? Tell us you want to be a pastor? We we'll send you to Bible school and said that was where all was coming left and right. But what gave me the stamina to do what I did, I could not understand. In the midst of these challenges, I was getting one job, losing another job, you know, I decided to have a three days praying. In that three days praying, I was expecting God to give me a specific direction, having made such a sacrifice. The first day, God didn't talk to me. The second day, he just gave me a word in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He said, in my time, I made all things beautiful. I felt so disappointed in God. I was expecting God to say, go and do this kind of business. Go and seek this employment so that these millions, remember, I still have no loss of the million, no, it's still there. I didn't hear anything from that from God. I felt mm -hmm. so disappointed. For three days fasting and praying, all that God was able to tell in my time, make all things beautiful. The Lord, what will I tell you now? Can I look back and say he has really made all things beautiful? Mm -hmm. What has happened? That same law firm that I rejected, that I don't want to go and manage, I want to manage God's work. In this same quarter called the Lord has given me two law offices. I run two of them in two different places in River State. Oh, I have lawyers okay. working under me now. In fact, I have even grandchildren several among lawyers who have come in, started their own, others come in and go in. The law has done a lot of wonderful things. I have seen God factor in my leg. God helping me, you know, working with transparency, working with integrity. I have seen God bringing clients. I have seen people saying, we have heard about you. Can you manage our property? Can you do this? I've seen myself in a tight situation in a court. I am still practicing my legal practice. I still go to court. And they will, I will come into a point where I am, I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to ask the question. I need to ask somebody in a law court. Wisdom will come from above. God will give me inside understanding what I will use. At the end of the day, victory will come. And when I'm going back, my junior, the junior lawyers in my office, they will say, how do, are you able to come out of this? I will say, it's a God factor. Mm. I thought that that would have been end. After all, God has given me two law offices. At least God should have tried. He should have stopped there. You know that God didn't stop there. Mm. All of a sudden, for something I did not have the skill, I didn't go to school for it, I wasn't trained, God gave me another company where I'm also the CEO. We are into human resources managing company. I have a multinational company in Nigeria where my firm manages their staff, they employ workers, they send it to us, outsourcing, we do it, and they, they pay us monthly for 14 years, good years. The Lord has sustained that business even as I'm speaking with you right now. It's still on. God is still doing it. I thought that would have been ended, but this same God is a wonderful God. He is. It's I was saying that if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. The good of the land in Nigeria is oil and gas. 
That was the same thing God brought me into oil and gas business. That business that will establish a company with service many multinationals here, and my wife is the one managing that. We, we, we have run that company for 10 years, and up to now, it is still on. Amen. I don't want to tell you what God has done, because in everything a young man needs as a man, he has given it to me. When I say he has made all things beautiful in all, his all sides, health-wise, marriage-wise, financial-wise, material-wise, physical-wise, spiritually, it has been so beautiful. I preach like, like you may think, I, I, it's only very few pastors around me, I still in my own locality that can count the number. I don't finish another preaching in the morning before I did this one. Tomorrow I'm gonna have, a, Monday I have another one I'm preaching. On Wednesday we have another program on Saturday. It has been a roll on. Now, look at what the Lord has done spiritually. He has taken me different places, different countries, preaching and doing wonderful things. And this time is so short that I will not be able, you know, to put all that that the Lord has done. But let me tell you one testimony in this pandemic. I was to travel to to Caribbean for an engagement, a preaching engagement from Caribbean to come down to New York, run uh, a professional course and join FGBMAV in Washington. I was to come back in U.S. in September for another convention. I was to go to Canada in August. But when the pandemic came, it's like everywhere blocked. But I want to tell you that despite the pandemic, this is the third meeting I have preached for chapters in U.S. California, Amen. Michigan, now in Frisco. Amen. Any that can talk to me in Nigeria, but I'm still ministering to people, my people in U.S. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful things happen. You know, we had a lot of lockdown, sudden lockdown, bank closed, where so many things was happen. In one of the houses we have, rent tenants are living. What a tenant but almost uh, uh, half um, what we like how do I qualify it in a dollar? Call it about is it uh, almost one thousand dollars cash. He didn't transfer it to my car, he brought it cash and handed it over to me. As he handed it over to me, they locked down everywhere, locked the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and now became a bank in my house. <laughs> <laughs> because his raw cash was in the house to buy food items, to buy things. We didn't laugh, we didn't feel anything within the period of pandemic. The Lord provided. The Lord made provision. What am I saying? I want to round up by telling you something. So important. It's in the area of my health. God has been so wonderful. Amen. Doctors, I encourage you, but I don't visit you. I only pray for God to help you to, <laughs> help, you to help others. And the Lord has been my healer. Both for me, my wife, my children, and all that. They have been so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage us with this word as I begin to round up. It doesn't matter what is the vision, as long as that vision is in line with God. Today, so ask me, that my personal vision, is it fulfilled? Yes. But who did it? It has nothing to do with me. It is the Lord that did it. Amen. And that is why this evening I have come to encourage us. What vision are you having in your mind? Your own may not be like my own. Your own may be even higher and bigger. But I want to encourage you that this God does not fail. I want to encourage you that this God is a, is a faithful God. I want to encourage you in the midst of my deficiency, in the midst of my lack, in the midst of I have the, God said, have the certificate. But you, let me see what you can make out of the certificate. I couldn't make anything out of it. I couldn't make anything out of the skill. And the, God gave me, even that one I was not trained in. And it has been so wonderful. I've come to encourage us. I've not come to blow my ego. But I've come to tell you something. Leave you a message. What is it that is taking your love out from God? Please don't allow it to come in between you. Between you and God. Let your trust, let your confidence remain in God. And as I, I, as I round up, I want you to 
See this chapter. See this chapter as belonging to you. See it as your father's business. That has been what has brought me to where I am today. I see this work as my father's okay. business. And as soon as I am alive, I am not permitted to allow it to die in my hand. I am not permitted to allow that what God has put in our hand to go, you know, to go barren. We must make it fruitful. I believe God will bless us as we do that in Jesus' name. Let's bow our hands. And that life is what I want to hand over to anyone that is willing. If there's anyone who have not given his life to Jesus, you can raise your hand or you can put, uh, use the reaction and put a, a, a hand lifting up so that we can pray for you and ask the Lord to come in and take his position in your life. That is the foundation. That's the entry point. That's the doorway for grace to come and do what you cannot do. I opened that door and grace came in and helped me to be where I am. Is there anyone among us who wants to say, Lord Jesus, I am here, come into my life and be my personal savior? I want to pray with you. Or you want to rededicate your life? Maybe one thing or the other has happened and you something along the way, your relationship with God has been affected. You want to rededicate your life? Is there anyone? Can you raise your hand or put a reaction mark so that we can pray? All right. Is there anyone believing you for believing God for healing, so that we can also pray for you? God heals. I have seen the Lord use us here in our midst. Thank you, thank you, my brother. Let's just pray right now. Father, we want to thank you for your son that lifted your hand. His son was lifted unto you, not unto any man. The Bible says you sent forth your word, and your word heal our diseases. The Bible yes. also said by the strength of Jesus we are healed. Father, I release your word that said by the strength of Jesus, we are here unto your son right now. Because this son is not a barrier. We ask right now, Lord, that your healing power, your healing virtue, we come upon him right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, my God. We speak to every spirit of infirmity out of his life now in the name of Jesus. He healed and received your healing. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Finally, Amen. let it be for your business or your work or your family. Whatever thing you are believing the Lord for, in your marriage, in your finances, in your business, or concerning your children, just raise your hand. I need to pray for somebody concerning his children. Just raise your hand up so that whatever it is, just believe the Lord for whatever thing. I just pray for you right now. Father, I just want to thank you. So the hands lifted up right now. Lord, I pray. Is it in business? Is it in marriage? Is it in finances? Is it concerning their children? Oh, Lord, our God, I bring us before you right now. Lord, I ask for your divine intervention. I ask for your miracle. I ask for your testimony. Lord, I ask that there shall be a divine encounter. Oh, Lord, our God, that your children will see a wonderful miracle happening. All you do, Lord, shall be returned. Thank you. Uh, where was it? Yeah. Jesus. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. Um, Do you mind?